Hello, a very good evening to you and a very warm welcome to the Scotty McClue Show. I'm Scotty McClue, I'm the first lord of the internet and I'm the world's top broadcaster according to every single one of you. Now, welcome, 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 I say, to one hour of superb scintillating information, education and entertainment, not just for one grateful nation, but for all nations throughout the world. There is no reason why close on two billion people cannot be watching this program tonight. And hopefully we'll get that as high as possible because it's very, very important. It's relying on you guys to share, 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 share. Welcome, 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 I say. Sunday night, nothing gets past me and it's show number 70. 70 tonight. Good to see you, says Alan Miller. And you, all right, Scotty. Shelley Boyle's watching. Good evening, Scotty, says Andy McClory. And Ian Pugh, lovely to hear from you. Happy 70th, says Mark Simpson. Thank you, Mark. It's great to be doing the 70th show with every single one of you. Fabulous people. I hope you saw the little promotion earlier today. And um, that just let you know what was happening. Dinky do, James Bauer from the Taxi Owners Association in East Kilbride. Get yourselves a taxi round East Kilbride. Dinky do, Scotty. Good evening, says Paul Crookshanks. Hello, Scotty. Dinky do, used to listen to the late night phone ins back in the day, every night on Red Rose Gold. Natasha Deverson Davies. Lovely to hear from you. Wadge is with us. Dee Gourley, good evening. And Robert J. Maguire is watching. Welcome. Dinky do to you, Robert J. Maguire. Stephen Stewart, Stephen Mooney, Ian Whitelaw, and John Simpson watching. Neil Tipping, two billion and one with me, Scotty. Hope you're well. So there you are. There should be no reason why two billion people cannot see this program right now. So there you are. So it's interesting. And um, we're looking at different platforms all the time, different vehicles. But show number 70, not too bad. So there we are. Well done for... Sandra Mackay in the brewing capital and butter upon Trent Scotty. We're full of bass, says Carol. Carol, lovely to hear from you and dinky do. Now, big subjects for discussion tonight, guys. So I hope you'll get down for them as quickly as possible. One is have we had enough referenda or do we need a second EU referendum and a second Scottish independence referendum? Also, should we change hello to dinky do when we meet internationally? Um, is Donald Trump a racist, says Alan Miller? Well, that's not really for us to say. That's between Donald Trump and his maker and the people of America. So there you go. I know that if a British politician had said the things that he'd said, they probably would have had to go. But maybe we're becoming a bit soft in Britain. I don't know. Uh, certainly there should never, ever, ever be racism because there is only one race, the human race. So there you are. Uh, did you see the coronation on TV tonight, Scotty? Carl, I didn't manage to see it tonight. I was so maxed with different things tonight. Michael Peverell's on. Andy Simpson, lovely to have you with us. James Fitton, don't mention referendums. The country's decided. Let's get on with making the country a better place to live for one and for all. Yes, but Alan has the country decided. Remember, they were pushed a lot of political duff gen, and that made a lot of them make their decision. Now, I think to myself, perhaps we need to be very careful about this because we could be getting ourselves into mess. So it's all very well you saying, let's make the country a better place. But does stopping Brexit actually make the country a better place? That's what we need to discuss. Good evening, Scotty, my friend. Scotty's a re-moaner. No, not necessarily. I'm not a moaner at all. I just want what's best for the country, including you. So you might not have thought it through. Think about that. Uh, dinky do and rub each other's noses. Scotty, the craze are on, says McCare. Yes, well, I'm not needing to watch that. Thank you. Um, Crossley Frank Gary is watching. Dinky do, Crossley Frank Gary. And Dinky do, says Alfred James Wright. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We need two new referendums, referenda it should be, so there's a bit more clarity, says John Simpson. Absolutely, John. You see, I'm not anything 
unless it's what's best for the country. I'm not a political animal. I don't deal in politics. I deal in facts and I deal in economics. All right. What side of the case on? Don't know about that. All right, Scotty. You're no 70, are you? No, it's Programme 70, Michael Savage Keenan. Programme 70 tonight. How fantastic's that? Would you take another referendum, Scotty? Yes. I don't think it would do any harm knowing what we know now. We should never have had the referendum until we were at this stage. All these questions and all that discussion. Hello, we're Britain. We're thinking in leaving the United Kingdom. We're the Westminster government. We're thinking leaving the United, uh, leaving Europe and just becoming the United Kingdom again. And we wondered if we could discuss all this with you. What kind of money would be involved? Blah, blah, blah. All right. Uh, I take it, dinky do over hello all day, my cousin's Carl. Yes. So instead of saying hello, we now say dinky do uh, when we meet. Scotty, what's your views on Brexit, says Annie Ross? I think perhaps we should cancel it just now and say, look, we're cancelling this just now. We'll come back to you on it. We need a bit of thinking time. We need to look into it properly. We'll keep discussing it with you, but uh, we'll stay with you for now. Visited Gateshead recently, Scotty. Past an area it's heavily populated. And I noticed, can't see what's happened there. Sorry, missed that one. Uh, so there we go. Lynn Finlayson and Ron Stewart, dinky do. Um, all right, got you, my man. You don't look a day over 69. Just kidding. This is Michael Savage here in no, no. program number 70. And uh, we'll have a share, share, share as soon as we can. Dinky Do, says Ron Stewart. Now, tonight we're talking about should Dinky Do replace hello when people meet? You know, some parts of the country you walk past somebody that you don't necessarily know. You go, all right, right? We should have Dinky Do. Yes, just let everybody know that. So there you are. Um, security guards patrolling the streets. I asked them what was going on, says Stephen. Stephen, I can't see because it says say more. Cancel politics and just do enjoy your life, oblivious to it all, says Mark Simpson. No, I think we do need to look after our best interests. There's no doubt about that. That's my mum and dad's favourite number, number 70, Carl. So there you are. Seven is lucky, I always feel. John Tom is watching Dinky Do, Dinky Do. Where are you? Says Mark Simpson. I am here, Mark. Where are you? Uh, they sadly are there to protect the streets. Uh, two points. Surely the only people allowed to police the streets are our police. And what does it say about our community? Right? That people feel that they need to police the streets. So there you are. Yes, well, it's vigilantism, isn't it? It's up to you, says Michael McGuigan. Shared, 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 shared Scotland, independence all the way, says D. Gourley. Yes, I think so. Financially, Scotland would be far, far better off independent. But Westminster feel they wouldn't be so good if they lost all Scotland's money and Scotland's input. The oil, the whisky, the foodstuffs, the larder of the country. Uh, I would love Scotland to come away from the UK, says Stephen Minney. Yes, but I've met one or two idiots involved in it, and they're getting the independence movement a bad name. So there we go. Uh, so that's uh, we don't. You see, you've got to look at the history of Scottish nationalism, and nationalism is a bit of a misnomer because um, it really is just uh, self-determination. That's what I would call it. It's an administrative thing. But if you have a business in Scotland, you should account in Scotland. London is sucking the life out of the rest of the country and uh, the houses are worth millions and millions and millions of pounds. It's become a market. Let's get that spread around the country as quickly as possible. Back to Scotland. You sound like a NIMBY, Scotty. In what way, Mark Simpson, do I sound like a NIMBY, right? I'm interested in anyone's backyard, not just mine. So explain yourself. Um, now, from Glasgow, but lived in Ireland for the last 18 years and agree, Scotland's too rich for the English to lose, says Lewis Smith. Of course it is, Lewis. They would be in an absolute panic because most of their money comes from Scotland, but that doesn't mean they could take it to Westminster and squander it on things that Scotland doesn't approve of. And uh, when they were asked last week, what about another Scottish referendum, apparently the answer was no dice. So we need to say in Scotland, when they're saying, can you give us your £40 billion plus this year? No dice. You know, that's what we need to say. 
They need to get in there and, uh, you know, be serious about it. Uh, Brexit will never happen, dinky do says Lynn Finlayson. I agree with you, Lynn. I think it'll be bream in. I think that's what'll happen. They'll do what's called a soft Brexit in name only, but they will never, ever, ever leave the EU because it's not good for the country. And the government was saying that right up until the referenda. They were saying, look, we'd seriously, seriously urge every single one of you to remain. And then you got the dafties. I love the English. Some of them says Mark Simpson. Well, no, the English are just people like anyone else. I mean, it's a huge sweeping generalization like the Scots. There's a lot of idiots in Scotland, a lot of idiots in England. You'll get idiots in France and Germany and Africa and India and Canada and America and Madagascar and Tasmania. You'll get idiots all over the place. But it's the sound people we're looking for, the common sense people, the ones who are interested in facts and economics. Scotty, good to see you back on, says Matthew Brown. Uh, do you think the government is in a misjest with everything going on? Um, no dance, correct, says Lewis, with no, no dice, they said. We're not playing. Um, am I an idiot, Scotty, says Mark Simpson? No, Mark, I don't think anybody has said you are an idiot. You have to listen very carefully to what's being said, right? I can't have a battle of wits with an unarmed opponent. So there you go. Uh, nay common sense, says Mark. That's exactly it, Mark. A lot of these people have nay common sense. If you've just joined us, a very warm welcome. You're watching Scotty McClue. This is the world's top broadcaster and the first lord of the internet. Live on Facebook Live, one of the world's great broadcast platforms. Just for you, dinky doo. So there we are. A few more in Glasgow than Scotty, especially when they have a sniff of the barmaid's apron well carol you'll know all about sniffing the barmaid's apron down in burton on trent autocorrect says lewis smith uh, so there you are carol carla stonnelly how are you dinky do see um i'm saying i'm an idiot no you're not an idiot mark you are certainly not an idiot idiots do not watch the scotty mcclue show it's the intelligentsia the switched on people the smart ones that watch Scotty McClure on a Sunday night, live on Facebook Live. Spread the word. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClure saying dinky-doo to every single one of you. Uh, you can he read Scotty's, Mark. Right, I can. Where's your glasses? Right, Mark, that's enough comments. I don't want you taking over the show when you've just arrived. I can't argue with someone who is ill-equipped. Hilarious, says Natasha Deverson Davis. You're absolutely right, Natasha Deverson Davis. How can you argue? How can you have a battle of wits with an unarmed opponent? It's like a clash of personalities when neither of the two people have got one. Uh, Jonathan Martin's watching Dinky Do. There are no idiots here, fellow, says Carl. No, I believe that, Carl. I do not think idiots watch Scotty McClure because they're not going to understand the program for starters. So there you are. I'm just going to do a little bit of sharing. So I'm going to move you all just to the side. We'll maybe take a call on Messenger, guys. That might be quite good as well. But I'm just going to, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pop this on here and do a little bit of sharing for you. That's fantastic stuff. Now, remember you can get Scotty McClue not just on Facebook, but you'll get him on Periscope. You can get Scotty McClue on Twitter. Follow me at Scotty McClue, all one word. All of you go on and follow me on Twitter. After the program, of course. Don't miss a second of McClure. You miss a moment of life. Marion Forrest says, hello. The new rail project's going to the wall. And the NHS down south. Well, the NHS in Scotland's doing very well because the Scottish government have never looked after Scotland so well. Third time lucky. Hello. Your views re-Brexit. What was that comment? Let me see if I can bring it back. Uh, your views re-Brexit. No, I can't get it back. Anyway, not to worry. Um, Theresa May has been lumbered with Brexit. She's not equipped to qualify to deal with it, says Lewis Smith. So there you go. Well, that remains to be seen. Yes, it's obviously a, what's regarded as a challenge. Because remember, she was a Remainer. She didn't want it in the first place, as far as I understand. Ben Fazakhali is watching Dinky Doo, David Lee Weir. Lovely to have you with us. What's your thoughts about the government not helping the homeless? There shouldn't be any homeless in Britain. I can tell you that for absolutely nothing. There should be no 
homeless in Britain. There are systems in place and they, they need to be properly used and make sure that nobody in this country is homeless. That's my feeling about it. I can tell you that. And uh, it, that's backed up by sound economics. So there you go. So we need to make sure that nobody is homeless. I'm fine. How are you, Scotty, my man? Says Carl Carlos Donnelly. Excellent, Carl Carlos Donnelly. Lovely to have you with us. Stephen Donaghy. Dinky do. Lovely to hear from you. Am I right in thinking, Stephen, that uh, you've been through the war just very recently and I send you love and blessings and strength? A very good evening to you, Scotty McClue, says Ben Fasakari from Liverpool. Charles McLaughlin, Scotty, the intelligent people watch your show and also voted to leave the European Union and make our own decisions. Yes, yes, but have we let ourselves in for something very, very difficult? In other words, the decisions were already being made and everything is in place. It's now going to have to be repeated. So there you go. Uh, there's my old friend... Um, Frank on Frank Pilkington the astrologer and uh, is going live at the same time as McClure. Good luck with that one. Lovely to hear from you Frank. Fantastic stuff. Right I'm just um, what I'm doing if you're wondering what's going on here I'm just getting the share ready. Are you all ready to share? Because it's time for our first share of the night. Share 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 right now guys here we go i'm just going to do it right now and that will be us shared i'll uh, like that there we go and here's the share coming up oh, hey fantastic nothing to it so share this video right now click the share buttons let's get it shared that's shared on the timeline so you should all be getting that very very soon and there might be changes guys we might be swapping platforms i'm just tipping you the wink i'm just saying because the distribution, we should be up to millions by now. I turn off when I see Nicholas Sturgeon says, Carl Scattergood, you should never ever do that because you're uh, missing out on a very, very, very intelligent lady and an excellent leader for Scotland. So there you go. So never ever turn off because you'll never gain anything by doing that. I can promise you. I'm sharing this to another page, the Scotty McClue um actual fan page so that's getting shared as well guys so if you all like to share that would be tremendous share with me and then also i'll share it to the group as we're speaking because people also come and join us and i think that's important so there we are so i'm just sharing to our group now guys and uh, that should be us share to the scotty mcclude group um because sometimes when you share to groups people think What's going on here? They all get very precious about it. They don't realize they're very, very lucky to have Scotty McClue sharing with them. So there you go. Because obviously I have a massive, massive social media distribution network. Tremendous stuff. But I would still go on the radio given half a chance. And there's lots of things happening radio-wise. I know I say it to you, but there are huge discussions going on at a very high level. So you should be seeing Scotty McClue popping up on your radio and television screens at some point. There you go, at some point. Share in a group, we got that. And uh, we just need to get the group right now. So there we go, we'll get rid of that. And we'll get the group right and we will share with you. Now, if you've just joined us, Robert Kay is saying hi from sunny Australia. You need, it's far colder up there, says Carol. We need to do the messenger group call, Scotty. Yes, Carl Carlos Donnelly, feel free to start that. Come on, messenger, and let me know. I'm just going to try and get the group name here. There we go. We've got, for some reason, a row of asterisks. I find that very strange. But anyway, I'll do that. And uh, the group name, Scotty McClue. Uh, how, are you all in this group, by the way? Scotty McClue fan group for fans, discussion, and debate everybody on facebook should be in this group so the scotty mcclue fan group you'll see that come up on the page guys and uh, make sure you're part of that very very important uh you know i think it's we, we need to have that as well right that's us back that's all the sharing done how's things scotty says devs fine thanks william davidson uh not i'm a celebrity says natasha Devers davis Deverson Davis, spot on, says Michael McGuigan. So there we go. 
Uh, right, what have we got here? Alfred James Wright. Um, if the government go against the people on Brexit, it will bring Nigel Farage back into politics and get what we voted for. Well, no, I mean, if the government go against Brexit, then uh, I'm afraid Nigel really won't have any place in the whole thing, will he? Uh, you know, if, if, if everybody goes against Brexit and says, no, listen, we're not doing it, you know, but uh, the government were very much for it. I mean, why would you want to leave the European Union? You've got to come out with that. David Keery, hello from Sonny Irvin, Scotty. Tremendous stuff. Irvin in Ayrshire. The sooner the better, lad. So there we go. Excellent stuff. Very, very interesting to hear from you. Now, we'll just, uh, because it's very busy here. Whoa, what a busy, busy night. Fantastic stuff. John Gray's joined us. Get a grape, Scotty, for goodness sake, man, says Makaya. Makaya, what are you talking about when you say get a grape? What do you mean? You have to qualify that. Tell me what's disappointing you, and I shall tell you what I'm thinking and why I am thinking that. Now, you don't get much of that to the pound, do you? Excuse me just a second. Quick comfort break, always roasting in this studio. Whoo! There you go, fantastic stuff. Hi from Edinburgh, says Huey Newtoft. Hello, Huey and Dinky Do. A very, very warm welcome from everybody uh, at Facebook Live out to everybody in Edinburgh, and from everybody in Edinburgh to everyone at Facebook Live. Dinky Do. Now, we need to up the distribution for this program, guys. There are obviously certain filters put on it that we don't reach the two billion people on Facebook Live, so we should be reaching 2 billion people with this program. Very important. Tony Mack had a great time interviewing Stuart Cosgrove today. A great broadcaster. Did you listen in? I didn't get to hear it, Tony, but thank you for passing on my regards to Stuart. He is indeed a very fine broadcaster and a very pivotal figure in the British media. So there you are. Great to hear from him. That's what they always used to say about Scotty McClue. Very influential behind the scenes of the British media. I like that. So there we are. I think he means get a grip of the squeeze box, Scotty, and give us a bit of the Jimmy Shand, says Stephen Weirmouth. So there you are. Tony Mack, one of our great broadcasters, and he's been interviewing Stuart Cosgrove, another of our great broadcasters today. Fantastic. So there we go. Alistair King, hi from Dunfermline. The King sits in Dunfermline Toon, drinking the blood red wine. Tremendous stuff. Uh, give us another share, guys. Share, 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 share. Scotty McClue's 70th show live on Facebook Live. One hour of superb scintillating information, education and entertainment for not just one grateful nation, but for every nation throughout the globe. Nation shall speak peace unto nation. How's you, Scotty? Kelty Caveman here. Kelty, Brian, Ireland. Lovely to hear from you in Kelty. You have to use a lang spoon when they're supping with a fifer skin. Uh, what's your thoughts about people waiting nearly five hours for an ambulance? Nobody should ever have to wait five hours for an ambulance. We need to get that sorted out very, very quickly. And uh, um, get money into the NHS and get everything sorted. Heard a wee bothy ballad about the Keith Show and Bros Magic. Nothing wrong with the Keith Show, I'll tell you that. A friend of mine was once on holiday in Morocco. And they were lying out in the desert sunbathing. And um, he looks up in the sky. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. And he went, all right, they're getting a fine day for the Keith show. <laughs> oh, wonderful. You don't want unelected boffins in Europe making our laws, do you, Scotty? Well, they've been doing that for, um, you know, the last 40 years, virtually. So, you know, I don't think that that's a bad thing, really, to be quite honest. And uh, the European Court of Human Rights has stood us in good stead. So there you go. I'm slightly anxious. You know, the British have a history. I mean, a British pension, for instance, is what about uh, £7,000 a year? Is that right? £78,000 a year. The German pension is three times that. And in the 1930s, they didn't want the German cruise ships calling in at the British ports in case they saw how badly British workers were treated. So there you are. So let's not just forget how the ordinary people in this country have been treated over the years. 
Uh, Scotty, you've always inspired me to radio. Many thanks, says Tony Mac. Tony Mac, not at all. You have inspired you to radio. I just hold up a lamp and light the way. So there you go. Uh, you're a saddle. Rack off, says June Haddon. June Haddon, you rack off. You're a saddle and you're about to be blocked and we will never, ever, ever hear from you again. So there you are, that's June Haddon. She's just been blocked, we'll never ever hear from her again. She is a saddo. Uh, you're still making the soup, Scotty? Oh yes, Brian Arnold, we still make the soup. Fantastic stuff, get the vegetables in, uh, get the bone in, get the stock going. Uh, have you seen the fox lately, Scotty? Yes, Steve, I see the fox regularly and call out and one night I called out to the fox and it was definitely the same one because it sort of came bounding down and then stopped a little bit at the last moment when it saw the dog as if to say, ooh. And then I say to the fox, I say, listen, you've nothing to run from, you wee soul. You don't have to fear McClure. Fantastic stuff. And they stop and they sit down. Uh, Scotty, are you okay with buying wonky vegetables or do you need the bureaucrats to tell you your banana's bent? No. I don't mind wonky vegetables if they're good. And I like if they've got a bit of earth on them. All that stuff went a little bit too clean. I mean, now if you watch the lady at the at the meat counter, one of the big stores, they're squitting, squitting, uh, squitting and squirting that sort of, um, what do you call it, disinfectant stuff on the work surface and wiping it. Then they're putting your meat on it and your meat soaks up some of that. That gets into your gut, kills off all your good bacteria, Blah, 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 blah. Whereas I can go back to when you went into the butcher shop, which was open in door and window to the street. The beasts were hanging up and you very often leant on the beasts as you were chatting to somebody. Then they said, what are you looking for? The butcher came out and he gave his front a wipe, just like that, down the front of his apron, the butcher's apron. And uh, he would then say, what's it you want? A couple of chops. He would take the big cleaver and he'd go, wallop, wallop. And then he'd say, well, that do you, son. And you say, that's lovely. Wrap it up in a wee bit of brown paper and away you went. So there you are. Uh, where did you find the bonnet big enough, says Alan Scott? Ha <laughs> ha! You're a funny man, Alan. Not. Uh, great to hear you, Scotty, says Tony Kerr. You too as well, Tony Dinky Doo. Scotty, did you get a happy meal with that tie? There you are. It's a wonderful tie. This is the monkeys. Uh, Ian, that's the three word out. You spelt it wrong. It's tie says Tam M. Scott. Why are you wearing your bunny indoors, Scotty, says Paul Ritchie. Well, let's be honest about it, Paul. I'm not as young as I used to be. I'm getting a little bit thin in the top. So we always have the bonnet on. It's like saying to Chick Murray, why are you wearing that Tammy on stage, Chick? So there you are. Uh, what's your thoughts on Brexit now, says Carl Carla Stanley. I think we should probably chuck it just now and take a breather. I think that would be sensible. But also tonight, crazy you know, Scotty, I was brought up playing in the dirt and it never hurt me, says Carl. No, it wouldn't do because it's good old mud. As long as you don't have a wound or anything like that. And uh, not heard you in ages. Good to hear you again, says Rob Fallen. Think you do, Rob. Let us know where you are. Uh, I once had Swedes the size of footballs, says Michael McGuigan. I can remember an uncle of mine. And he lived in a village and he was a very keen gardener. And he, he loved to show his uh, his huge marrows, his championship marrows. And uh, I remember there was a touch of frost. An uncle went down in the night and he stayed and he sat and he hugged the marrow so it didn't get hit by the frost. And in the morning, we found him frozen to the marrow. Interesting. Uh, keep the napper warm, says Alistair King. Absolutely. Would you boycott the new iron brew recipe, Scotty? No, not at all. Uh, because apparently it tastes the same, and I'm up for that. If it tastes the same, it tastes the same. Fantastic. Andrew has told us the top brands coming out of Scotland are Bars Iron Brew, Tunnock Carmel Wavers, Radio Clyde, and Scotty McClue. There you go. Fantastic. What's your thoughts on Jeremy Hunt being given social care, Scotty? So there you are. And he's been given more to do, so Stephen Wayworth. Well, I don't normally comment on cabinet reshuffles, and this one certainly is not worthy of my comment or worthy of my time. Nothing dramatic has happened, 
and I genuinely don't think Mrs. May has a tremendous amount to work with uh, there. So uh, that's uh, that's why I'm not really commenting on it. Um, I like Twarmint's Pies uh, and an Ingen and an Anna. So they are says Mark. So they have I said that right, Mark? An Ingen and a. All right. I like Twarmint's Pies and an Ingen and a. So you like two mince pies and an onion as well. Right, Dave McFeeters, dinky do. Barney McFarlane, dinky do to you. A fine, fine fellow. Lovely to hear from you. So excellent stuff. What a busy, busy night tonight, guys. Share time has appeared again. Can everybody share, 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 share. If you've just joined us and you're an alien life form from another planet and you've never heard of Scotty McClue, dinky do to every single one of you, I say. I've been around for a wee while now, uh, and there's big talk of going back on the wireless, so look out for that one. Give us a call on Messenger someday and we'll try it if you want to come on. But remember, very, very careful on the language. Good evening, my good fellows, says Douglas McPherson. Just a quick check, is this live? If so, it's a good show. Douglas McPherson, I can prove to you by talking to you straight, face to face, man to man, this is very much a live show on Facebook Live. Dinky do. Uh, we're on every Sunday night, 9 o'clock sharp until 10 o'clock. This is show number 70. But if we can't get the distribution, we may have to move the show to another platform. There's a lot of big platforms there. We'd be delighted to see Scotty McClue go to them. Where have you been all these years? I haven't seen, heard your show since your radio days, says Colin both. Oh, I do lots of different things, Colin. I advise very senior people on media presentation. I wouldn't be so base as to name my clients, of course. And uh, I also lecture, I teach, I do all these different things. And um, I get in discussions uh, at a very senior level in the British media as well with very senior people and see what is what. Cuckoo, Scotty McClue. Uh, fantastic. Scotty, if everyone was paid extra, I can't see that bit. Scotty, if everyone paid an extra three quid a week national insurance, uh, this could go to the NHS. That's millions every week. The Tories can't mislay it because it will be accounted in Scotland. You're right. You've certainly been around, says Barney McFarlane. I have, Barney. I get around, and you are a very talented man. I assume I'm talking to the same Barney McFarlane. I think I am. If I mentioned the bagpipe, would that ring a bell? There you are, bagpipe, fife and drum. Can you say hello to Louisa Scotty, says Steve Burroughs. Louisa, dinky do from me, Scotty McClue. Welcome to show number 70. Lovely, lovely, lovely to have you all with us. Pete Casey, I stumbled across you from Melbourne. Will you be doing any chanting? Well, we have the goodbye song at the end. We have to watch the music because obviously we upload the program to YouTube and we don't want to fall foul of any copyrights or anything like that. Bring back Scotty, says Brian Island. Yes, I am convinced this program would be massive on a television channel with the telephones. Purely interactive, you and me guys, talking straight between each other. Right? I also think it'd be massive on the radio. So, any budding radio stations out there, any radio stations launching, get Scotty McClure, get your numbers up and let's go. Uh, I did say to somebody recently in radio, I said, you must meet me halfway. You must actually put me on. Otherwise, it's very difficult to get you a massive audience. So there we are. And I'm talking a big audience. Nearly 70,000 people viewed the Scotty McClue material over the Christmas period. We did several shows and we had nearly 70,000. You'll see the Christmas show, big red jumper with a floppy Santa hat, and uh, it's sitting at 12,000. Now, bear in mind, guys, it's a Facebook video. So there you go. <clears throat> and it's probably very, very, um, you know, carefully kept from going right out to all of Facebook. Otherwise, there'd be two billion of you could see it. Uh, Prince Charles on a visit to a place called... Oh, yes, very good, Alfred. We've got that one. Uh, lovely to hear from you. 
I have not seen Scotty for years. Good to see you, you legend. Right, if you've just joined us, welcome, 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 I see. You're watching Scotty McClure. We are, of course, live on the big one. Yes, the one everyone's talking about and the one everyone is watching. Scotty McClure live on Facebook Live each Sunday night at 9 o'clock sharp. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. You are the distribution, guys. You need to share it round your pages, round all your groups. Tell people to come and join us. Type, 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 type. Do it right now. In fact, let's have another share. I'll just move you to the side so I can see what's going on. And I shall just share right now. Share in a group. And we'll see if we can get everybody coming and joining us. Very, very important. And if you see Scotty McClue in your groups send it round uh you know you get the odd daft that goes oh what's this this group's about there's two or three of us have a nice chat every night not and you say look it's scotty mcclue your group will start to you know get out there and get round and what have you i've got a distribution network of millions out there if i send a tweet it can go up to thousands and thousands and thousands within seconds so there you go, fantastic stuff. Follow me on Twitter, everybody, by the way, at Scotty McClure. Excuse me, we're just having a quick comfort break. It's roasting hot in this studio. And, uh, oh, there we are, better. Fantastic stuff. Right, uh, sharing a group. So we're just going to share it again. Um, uh, or I'll tell you what, we'll share on... A pay oh, there it's there. Fantastic stuff. Right, we're just having a share. Can everybody share this right now? Right click on the URL, see where it says at the top. Tell me, are you all watching on www.facebook.com forward slash Scotty dot McClue dot nine? Is that the one everyone's watching? Can you please do that for me? That would be tremendous. So, there we are. Just got a bit of backspacing to do here. Uh, get that sorted out. Fantastic. I must have lent in a button and we've got a row of asterisks. Right, that's that. Uh, now the group is Scotty McClue fans. There's about 4,000. You'll see, I'll try and get it shifted over while you're all watching and let you actually see it. Uh, so, fantastic stuff. Now, Ian Walker, keep your hand on your... Oh my goodness, are we busy tonight? So there we are. Which platform? says Carl Carlos Stanley. Uh, we're looking at several platforms. I wouldn't be so base as to mention it right on here. But we also do shows on Periscope. Is everybody on Periscope? Let me know what platforms you guys tend to tune into. Uh, so there we go. Good evening, Sir Scotty, Lord of the Internet, from Neil in Bournemouth. Neil O'Gormley in the beautiful, beautiful Bournemouth. How fantastic is that? So there we go. Uh, newsflash, and uh, I'll just say newsflash, everyone, and live now. So the one that came up as newsflash, I'm just putting it live now. So there we are. Okay, live. Now you'll see this come up, guys. Very important. Oh my goodness, this is doing everything yourself. You see, you have to. Oh, well, you have to do all that. N O W. That's it. Nothing wrong with my spelling, I tell you that for nothing. Right, that's coming up in the Scotty McClue group right now. Remember you on Red Rose Radio many moons ago? I hope you're well, says Raymond Seddon. Yes, I loved Red Rose Radio in Preston. Red Rose Gold. And we went out to thousands upon thousands upon thousands. It was tremendous stuff. It was a wonderful, wonderful radio station. And uh, it was run by a gentleman called Mike Henfield. One of the finest broadcasters, journalists and radio executives this country has ever seen. And also Mike has another string to his bow. He appointed me, Scotty McClue, to Red Rose Gold. I remember the program controller taking me in to meet him and Mike said, Yep, yeah, that's fine. Got a good one here. Uh, little I think even then did Mike realise just how big this would go. Fantastic stuff. Worldwide. Tremendous stuff. Uh, what's Dave McFeeder say? Oh yes, yeah, Scotty, I think we should give Julian Assange Scottish <laughs> What's your position on Scottish independence, says Dave McFeeder. Well, I'm not looking at it. I'm not a political animal, as you well know, and I'm certainly no Scottish nationalist. But um, 
my position of Scottish independence is we should definitely go for it because by independence, it's been racked up in the wrong way. Yes, all it is is self-determination. In other words, we're governing Scotland from the capital of Scotland. Now that makes utter sense. We then account in Scotland. Uh, we tax in Scotland. Scotland is responsible for its own broadcasting. So there you are, you have the Scottish Broadcasting Corporation. And because the cultures are so different, Westminster will never, ever, ever get an understanding of the Scottish culture because Scotland has been an asset to the world ever since it was created. When you think about it. And although the Scots are saying all oh, the dreadful things that the British Empire did, also the fantastic things that the British Empire did, and the Scots ran it. And the reason the Scots are so good is because they um, don't subscribe to the class system. So when you hear somebody saying, oh, the class struggle, the class struggle, drop it. There is no class struggle, all right? I'm talking about elites. Forget that. Drop it. People are people, right? So I'm a meritocrat. I believe that people should get on on their own abilities and this country does allow for that great to hear you again from bonnie dundee says william jose um i remember you in red rose radio michael yule dinky do michael collar dinky do to you fantastic to have you with us right i've just done some sharing have you done your sharing now tonight what we're discussing two subjects for discussion have we had enough referenda would we benefit from another referendum right so there you are both on the eu knowing what we know now and also on i mean it still might be a leave you never know but keep the politicians out of it go purely on the facts on what's best for this country all right or for the four countries yes that uh, make up the island of great britain and northern ireland uh, so there you are. Alfred, I think you're getting confused. That's me who has made... Just a wee minute. What are we at here? Um, yes, Neil's in Bournemouth. Neil O'Gormley, fantastic. I'm just trying to see what this guy's point is here. Um, Give us a tune, Scotty, says Carl Carlos Donnelly. Edward Strang Steele's watching Dinky Doo. Ed, lovely to have you with us. And uh, thoroughly enjoyed our chat over Christmas. Fantastic. Interesting to hear the uh, information that you and I can share. Shared quality hearing those dulcet tones again, says Colin Both. Colin Both, thank you very much. Very, very kind of you. Carol says, Scotty, should the girls still be allowed to drive? Well, they're talking about bringing in driverless cars, and I wondered if there should maybe be grants for some of the lady drivers so there you are also that speech that was made at the golden globes uh, last week by upra somebody was saying that's set uh, feminism back a thousand years very very interesting and i can see in a way where they're coming from because if people use um, any platform they get to push something like that um it turns people off do you know what i mean You'll notice I don't use this platform to push a lot of other things. It's very much our show, yours, mine, chit-chat. Uh, lady drivers, so there you are. Uh, well, ladies, I, I've said this for years, they're coordinated differently. Sometimes I used to go up to the supermarket on a Saturday morning, not because I was needing a lot of shopping, uh, you know, just one or two little bargains. But I would also sit... And just as a bit of sport, really, like watching the racing on the television. And you would see the women coming in trying to park and things like that. In general, I know it's a sweeping generalization, but, you know, I used to watch that. Fantastic. Nikki Anderson, thank you, do. Lovely to have you with us. Uh, the very same, says Barney McFarlane, loving the show. Barney, great to hear from you. You absolute top man. Tremendous stuff. Um, I, I'm just thinking how far you and I go back. And you'll probably not be far short of uh, 45 years, something like that. Certainly 40 years, easy. The time just flies. Time flies when you're enjoying 
yourself. And if you're enjoying yourself, you'll never work a day in your life, I can promise you. Dinky do. Welcome, Nicky Anderson. Lovely to have you with us. Uh, Tony Mac says, I grew up in a tower block. I think knocking down the tenements was the worst thing. These tower blocks were disastrous. What do you think? Well, Tony Mac, uh, obviously we've had that terrible fire last year. Uh, so from that point of view, we know that uh, there are dangers in tower blocks. But having said that, tower blocks have stood for many, many years. I'm trying to think. Hutchison E was opened by Prince Philip, I think in 1965. Is that right? And I've been up tower blocks and had some terrific views from them. Quite outstanding. You know, you think what people pay for a luxury penthouse in London. And you get a tower block with a flat that looks over the whole of the west of Scotland virtually. You think, this is wow! You know, and uh, people were buying these for about 6,000 quid if they'd been tenants for a long time. Best wind-up merchant ever, Sir Stephen Connolly. Uh, so there you go. But um, the tenements, tremendous. I mean, I've twice in my life lived in a tenement. Uh, once for six years and once for 11 years and loved every second of it you know because i loved the view and all that sort of thing fantastic stuff uh, so there we are i've not seen scotty for years good to see you legend says robert skeen dinky do robert guys can we have another share we're coming up to a quarter two if you've just joined us folks and you're wondering what on earth's going on somebody posted last week is this roaster for real yes I am for real. I am Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster and the first lord of the internet. And don't you forget it. I still hold the record for calls to a radio station, 460,000 calls in one week. I still hold the record for audiences of coming up for a quarter of a million people per half hour. Nothing's changed. Don't listen to me I'll tell you the world has changed. And it's not the time for Scotty McClue. There is always a place for Scotty McClue somewhere in the world's media. So if you're watching and you run a television station or a radio station, then say, I will go to Scotty McClue. I will say to you, I want you to do a half hour television program. I want you to do it live and I want you to take the phone calls from the people. Will you do it and how much will it cost me? I shall give you an answer and we will do it. So there you go. Uh, fantastic stuff. Colin Rogers watching Dinky Doo. Colin, lovely to hear from you. Fantastic stuff. Tonight we're saying, have we had enough referenda or should we have more? Now, also, is it time to get rid of the word hello? Hello. And replace it with Dinky Doo, direct from Scotty McClue. Internationally, right across the world. When you meet somebody, and remember, everyone smiles in the same language. Remember, there's no need for racism. There's only one race. Remember, if you're talking about people being colored, then everyone is colored. White is also a color, as well as black. So there you are. So we've got that. Scotty, you're an enigma. So there we are. A rice crispy amongst the cornflakes. Geez, oh, they were right all along. You do only have a face for radio, says Alan Scott. Alan Scott? No need to be cheeky. Jealousy is a terrible, terrible thing. And I can't help being something of an oil painting. So there you are. Tam M. Scott. I did put it to the nation. I said, do you want me to do audio only? Or are you quite happy with McClue and Vision? And they all said, no, no, let's see you. Let's see it. McClue and Vision. Uh, so there you go. Uh, Scotty, what's your thoughts on a school for girls? that aren't girls. Um... Partly the word girls is to be banned. Yes, girls and boys is to be banned because it might offend people who are transgender. So there we are. Keep your horn in your hate, eh? says Mark Gifford. Scotty No Clue says Johnny Curry. Johnny, what we'll do with you? It's harsh, I know. It's very harsh. But what we'll do with you, Johnny? Just a wee second. That's why I'm just bringing Johnny back, guys, uh, just to take his punishment. What we'll do with you, Johnny, is we'll, uh, we'll probably ban you. So there you are. Go for it, Scotty. Gary for five. Gary Austin. Thank you, do. Love to update. You're in five, Ken. 
Uh, hi, Scotty, says Ross Callender. Hello there. Happy birthday, Daniel, says Carol. Jacqueline Quick is watching. Lovely to have you with us, Jacqueline. Thank you do. Uh, who asked for a tune on the squeeze box? I'm going to get a mouth organ and uh, bring that in, I think. But I'll give you a wee tune on the squeeze box, guys, because time is getting on. <laughs> Gee, Hamilton, what am I watching? You're watching Scotty McClure, the world's top broadcaster, first lord of the internet, broadcasting live on Facebook Live. Way to go, Scotty, says Gina Livingston. Alan Scott, give the missus the tweezers, uh, says Tam Scott. She might find it. So there you've... Oh, sorry. You gave your missus the tweezers in the hope she might find it. Well done. Good. I hope you had luck. Uh, so there we are. Uh, the way forwards, says Michael McGuigan, absolutely information, education and entertainment, not just for one nation. Can you play the Muthi too? Of course I can. For goodness sake, what do bears do when they go into the woods? Of course I can play the mouth organ. Alfred, I think you're getting confused. Uh, it's me who's made a mess of the English NHS. Absolutely. So there you are, Ernie. Good point. Uh, Rebecca Livingston says, hello, Dinky Doo, Mary T. Warner's watching. Lovely to hear from you, Mary T. Warner and Dinky Doo. Leave, Scotty, says Neil McWilliam. Are you talking to me personally, Neil? Or are you talking about uh, leaving the EU? Councillor Henry Anderson, Dinky Doo. Lovely to hear from you. Fantastic stuff. Now, guys, what a program it's been tonight. Tremendous. You're just um, watching Scotty McClue, S-C-O-T-T-I-E, capital S, small c, O-T-T-I-E, McClue, capital M, small c, capital C, L-U-E, Scotty McClue. First of all, internet, broadcaster, I accept applause or derision purely on my merits, and that's entirely up to you. If you would like to help us with a tiny bit of finance, go to gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue and stick in a five or a ten or fifty quid a thousand pounds whatever you like to do not a problem or you can go to paypal.me forward slash Scotty McClue all one word and pop something in there so there you are you don't have to no pressure at all but we've done 70 programs we're hoping to raise 5,000 quid we've raised 500 so we're 10 percent I think we've raised 510 and we've raised a fair bit on uh, PayPal. So some people prefer to paypal.me forward slash Scotty McClue, all one word. No, not football, says Stephen Weymouth. Ian Walker, Winston Churchill said the Scottish nation gave more than any country, uh, apart from Greece, to the history of the world. What he actually said, Ian Walker, was um, no one apart from the ancient Greeks have done more for the world than the Scots. So there you go. One thing, I didn't agree with everything he said. He was a good talker, and I certainly did not agree with everything he did. I can tell you about that. I would love to have known uh, what went on the night that Hess crashed. I would love to have known what was involved there, what was actually going on. I doubt we ever will, but there we are. And obviously they kept Hess in isolation for the rest of his puff, the poor old soul. There we are. Although, having said that, he was a Nazi, and, uh, but it would have been great to know what his message was and, uh, and what was going on there, because a bit of mystery surrounding that. And we do know that at Dungable House, the night that Hess was heading over, if you look at Dungable on the map, then you'll find that as the crow flies, he was only minutes away from landing, and the landing lights were on. Dungable had a landing strip, and the landing lights were on that night. Very, very interesting. So there you go. Having said that, though, the experts say that the plane he was flying, which was an ME-110, uh, 
the uh, the small bomber version uh, wouldn't have been able to get down because that was um, what was used for uh, landing the old tiger moth. Interesting. Hi, Scotty Dinky do. Say no to independence, says Rebecca Baird. Well, Rebecca, I don't know where you're coming from in that. And I mean, obviously, the Scottish referendum was very, very close. And I think if Labour had gone for the independence vote, then they'd have been in power right now. So that was a real own goal by the Labour movement. That's probably the silliest thing the Labour movement has ever done because what Labour tend to forget sometimes is the Scottish National Party was born out of the Labour movement. So there we are. Medical facts, Scotty. Men have part of their brain calibrated to judge distance. Women don't go back uh, to our days as a hunter. Women don't. It goes back to our days as a hunter. No, I think women are far more protective people from looking after the wee ones. Remember your New Year's resolution to stop playing the squeeze box. No, Ian Walker, I shall never ever stop playing the squeeze box until I get it right. So there you go. There was no resolution. That was your New Year resolution to stop Scotty McClue playing the squeeze box. Hard cheddar old bean. Right, how are we doing for time? We're very short of time. We're tight for time. Um, tell 10, tell 10, to tell 10, to tell 10 about Scotty McClue live right now on Facebook Live. Somebody said, what am I watching? So people are joining us from around the world. The problem I've got here, uh, I agree, Rebecca, says Tam Scott, uh, but the problem I've got here is with one of distribution. So it's been wonderful doing the shows. We're show number 70 tonight, but the distribution is the challenge for me. There should be billions watching. There should be almost 2 billion watching right now, and there should certainly be millions watching right now. Uh, hey, says Nikki Anderson. Hey, Nikki. Dinky do to every single one of you. Lovely to have you with us. Just to let you know, though, almost 70,000 of you saw the Scotty McClue shenanigans and antics over the Christmas period. And you'll see, you'll see if you look at the little figure at the bottom of the uh, Christmas video, you'll see that 12,000 of you to date have had a swatch at that. No to independence, says Rebecca Livingston. You need to justify yourself. Uh, you're a vote on Brexit, as this should be void. She never had a mandate for it, says Michael McGuigan. So there we are. So yes, so we need another vote on Brexit. You're spot on, Scotty. The culture of the Scots is lost in Westminster, says Barney. Barney, absolutely, there's no way that um, a Westminster government could ever understand the culture of the Scots. And I go back to January 1968. 50 years ago tonight, I would have said it was, there was a massive hurricane hit Scotland and ripped the roofs off the tenements. The Secretary of State for Scotland at the time was Willie Ross, the late Willie Ross, a great character. I think, if I remember right, Willie was a unionist, but he was a Labour man. Yes, and he was uh, all for the miners and what have you. He came from mining stock and uh, an Ayrshire man, a very deep, lovely, rich, deep voice. So there you are. And uh, Willie went down to London to ask for um, money for Scotland because Scotland had been so badly hit. People had lost their lives in Greenock and Glasgow. And they said no. And then I can remember broadcasting on ITV the morning of the hurricane that brought down the trees in Kew Gardens. And they were in floods, in floods in London about that sort of thing. So that kind of thing annoys me, right? Because Scots are certainly far from second class citizens. In fact, if anything, they're first class citizens plus one. All right, apart from the idiots, you know, but you'll get the idiots anywhere. Uh, David Shepherd's watching, Dinky Doo, Shelley McRobbie, one of our fine broadcasters is watching. You'll see a lovely interview with Shelley McRobbie interviewing Scotty McClure, and you'll get that live on Facebook. Uh, could we knock down Buckingham Palace? What's this guy on about? Uh, Scotty uh, with the royal family. No, Stephen, what you've got there is a total misunderstanding of the royal family, how the whole system works, etc. If we become independent in Scotland, we should bring the royal family with us. Not a problem. And then you'd have a much, much easier journey, right? Don't get caught up in the sideshow. The royal family do a fabulous job. The Queen is an exemplary lady and a very, very nice lady as well, as is her husband, Prince Philip, 
Royal Highness Prince Philip, and um, Buckingham Palace was bought for 5,000 quid from the Duke of Buckingham. And uh, it's only now getting done up, getting the facelift it needs. After the war, it had a bit of a facelift to the front. Uh, so there you are. Also the Victoria Memorial, when, uh, when Queen Victoria died. Uh, the Victoria Memorial out in the front. But um, to be quite honest with you, a lot of people misunderstand just the wonderful, wonderful job. They're all also bringing in billions of pounds, and the cost is 52 pence a year. Buckingham Palace, just so that you know, it was totally highly unsuitable, not suited at all to housing homeless people. So don't go down that road. The homeless people would be very unhappy. Uh, they're very vulnerable. They would get lost. There's 460 rooms in Buckingham Palace. These are just the ones we all know about. So there you are. I like your hat. Could I have it, says Stevie Balfour? Stevie, if that's what you want. Tony Kerr, 460,000. Brilliant, Scotty. Absolutely. Just watching this, says Rebecca Beard. Welcome, Rebecca. Lovely to have you with us. You're watching Scotty McClure, the world's top broadcaster. First lord of the internet, broadcasting live on Facebook Live. But we do need to up the distribution, and I'm not sure if it's possible on this platform. So if we do move to another platform, then you'll know why. Uh, spell check, beat me again, says Stephen Conley. Hi, Scotty, used to listen to you on radio many years ago. Good to hear you again, says Janice McNair. Dinky do, Janice. Lovely to have you with us. Excuse me a second, folks. Quick comfort break. Whoa. The heat in here is incredible. Mind you, it is January, and you know how warm it gets in January. I'll just have a, a drop of water. Mmm. Oh, that's absolutely lush. Uh, yes, no hear this voice in ages. Go on, Scotty McClure. You sound as if you've been <laughs> dinky do. How do you do, says Brian Morrison, dinky do. Yes, I've great memories of fine times and tremendous laughs. Take a breath, says Barney McFarlane. Barney, I haven't time to take a breath. We've only got an hour of uh, scintillating information, education and entertainment for the nation. We haven't time to take breaths. A little bit short of breath because it's been a busy day and I've been breathing all the time. Um, arise, Sir Scotty, says Stephen Wright. No, I'm not doing it for that. There's only one honour I would quite like to have before I um, move on to the big room. And that would be uh, the KCVO. That's the one. That's a beauty. Look that one up. The KCVO because it's in the gift of Her Majesty herself. So it's not coming to you via the Central Chancery of the Orders of Knighthood at St. James or anything like that. It's coming from Her Majesty the Queen because she feels you've been of service to the country. The KCVO or a GVO. That's another one. So there you are. Uh, is it a GVO or a GCVO? It might be it's a GCVO, I think. Lord Reith had one of them, and he was knighted at 37, John Reith, for starting the BBC. Man from Glasgow. There you are. Uh, white and black is a shade, I believe, says Rebecca Beard. Yes, absolutely, Rebecca. Uh, so there we are. Uh, Stephen Connolly, two referendums, please, Scotty. Time to go it alone, but happy to give the English a wee discount. Great to hear you, Scotty. I just said yesterday, I wonder what happened to you. And you just vanished off air. Well, Karen, something funny happened. Nothing to do with me. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Very, very interesting. Uh, why would uh, a team just give up their top striker unless it was uh, nearly putting other teams out of business? Mum's the word. I know nothing. So there we are. Great to hear you, Scotty. I just said yesterday, I wonder what happened to you. Says Cam, yes, we just read that one. Uh, on the oil, says Stephen Connolly. Uh, so what shall we be known as, says Rebecca Beard. Tell me more, Rebecca, in what actual context are you wondering what you've been known as? Scotty, is Rangers a new club, says Brian Morrison. Brian? No need to be offensive. Uh, give me your hat, says Stephen Balfour. Right, Steve, but the only thing is, I'm a wee bit thin on top, and if I gave you my hat, I would have to replace it with another hat. So what I would need to do is 
Pop on my Glen Gary. Right, are you ready? One, two, three, hooray! There we go. I pop on the Glen Gary, you get the Scotty McClue bonnet. What about that? Would that be fair exchange? Is no robbery, I say. Right, uh, hey Scotty, fantastic. So there we go, tremendous stuff. Uh, how are we doing for time? Oh my goodness, we're out of time, we're over time. Guys, it's been an absolute privilege being with you tonight. Tremendous stuff. Dinky do to every one of you, I say. Have a fabulous week. Look after yourselves. Tell everyone, tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue. Live on Facebook Live. This is show number 70. If we move to another platform, I will let you all know and you can come and join me. So there we are. Whoa! Fantastic. Did you see that? We even thin on top. Uh, why can't we have a government that tells the truth? Well, they used to say that the first casualty of war was the truth. You're, it's a very, very good question, Steve. I think politicians should be sacked if they're found to be misconstruing the truth. So there you are. Uh, excellent stuff. Uh, so, excellent. Oh, <laughs> Ian Walker with his chat there. Shocking. Right, I have to go. I'll sing you the song. Okay, you ready for the song? Here we go. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody. A waiter saying au revoir and a cheerio. Take care of yourselves, my loves. Have a fabulous week. And to every single one of you, as we say in the very best of circles, Dinky Doo, Scotty McClure has left the building. Oh, yes.